This movie time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Wayne Miller. Yeah, the heck you are. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, let me see. What's the name of the film we're doing today? Let me take a big guess. A ghost story. Yep, and it is a ghost story. <laughs> and our good friend Casey Affleck walks around the majority of the movie after he gets off the table at the morgue in a sheet with eye holes cut in. I thought, how appropriate, but come dressed for the part. John, you and I have taught a number of film courses over the years. And one of the things uh, that we talk about in our classes, the use of editing. And there's this term called a content curve, where uh, the editor, would, if he would cut away too, too early, it's confusing way too late though and oh my god it is in, uh, it puts somebody to sleep <laughs> now you would you call that again Con content curve content and it's curve, really right. where you know the viewer gets yeah. most of the information from the shot and i tell you <laughs> now wait a minute are you movie, suggesting there may have been long shots oh, of the ghost standing there <laughs> uh, of the ghost standing there um of rooney uh, mara Binge eating in her grief, an entire pie. Wasn't that a great sequence, though? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> she but, ate the whole pie. And there's other scenes throughout. Like, there's one, an establishing shot of their little, you know, run-down, you know, uh, ranch-style house. And we're out by the street. And I'm thinking, when are they going to cut away? We've seen this house in the driveway. But, and then there's, you know, other scenes throughout, but also... There's some very interesting scenes of, of edited scenes, like the ghost standing there, and there's one really cool sequence after you can see that she's moving on with her life because you see all these kind of cuts of her walking out of the bedroom, you know, getting her keys, walking out the door, and then it just kind of morphs one shot after another of that, uh, almost uh, indicative of a passage of time. Yeah, you know, uh, let's not... Uh mislead the audience yes. uh, by saying that this is a worthless film because all you have is a ghost standing around. Yeah. I think you've suggested what I feel about it. There is substance here and much of it has to do with the very human feeling of loss yes. once we've had death. Yep. And how many times haven't you thought about wouldn't it be great to be able to see the ones I love after I die? Well, uh, this filmmaker who is David Lowry who did, uh, of course, Pete's Dragon, which yes. gave him the sure. right to make this very low-budget film. Very low he budget. also did Ain't Them Body Saints with um, uh, Mera and uh, Affleck. Yes. But, but I guess my point being there is substance here, but you, as you opened up with your content curve, I, there's, you have to wait through quite a few passages where if you are not sensitive to uh, uh, allegorical filmmaking, yes. uh, you are going to For, wait uh, to go to leave that film. And it's a short movie. It's only about a little over an hour and a half long, but yet it seems a lot longer in times. It, the movie really picked up for me probably about the last half, last third of it. You know, when it, because uh, ghost stories we've seen before, it takes place in one particular point in time. Yeah. <laughs> And but this Why one you do that, ghost stories. Uh, the, uh, ghost stories usually are a particular, you know, like point in time, and yeah. that's it. This one though, as if a ghost is a ghost, then when do they you know, finally depart to the the great beyond or whatever? And here we see this it kind of goes on, and that's where the last. Uh, I'm telling you, this was a hard movie for me to really <laughs> judge. I knew it because, would be because <laughs> you know that. Uh, the first half uh, hour of it, you know, you better come with some no dose because, you know, you may be bored out of your mind. But it picks up later on. And I don't mean picks up by, you know, uh, action sequences because this is not a horror movie. Well, if you see some of the relationship with Twilight Zone there, and, and Terrence Malick's Tree of Life, oh, yes. you get an idea of yep. both elements 
that there is something going on here and it has to do with the human condition and if you can see that this is you know nobody believes this is a real ghost but it, it's depicted as that yes. nobody even knows if it's Casey Affleck under that yes. I don't even know if it's Wayne Miller well, under I, this I, one. <laughs> <laughs> except I can hear his chatter yes so, I, 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 <laughs> but the uh, it, it, it where it picks up for me is when you see other families or other groups move in but then the house winds up being destroyed and uh, in its place is some high rise so you see him wandering the halls <laughs> of this high rise office building I know. but then th but but then what really it, i mean, i tell you a movie that i really i can't say i really cared for or i'd watch it again but i may watch it again because, but it has induced so much thought provoking conversation between my friend Audrey who went to the movie right. with me afterwards and then since then I've been thinking does this in a particular shot mean this you know what about the pioneer family that's wiped out by Indians well I'll tell you, you I know, in my written it, review I said almost the same thing I said this is going to provoke discussion yes uh, even if you don't like it yes it's still you're going to say now what was that all about da da but, da and and it, it, his little ghost buddy <laughs> what it was interesting <laughs> enough I know what another Affleck, ghost it, yeah as Affleck gets off the morgue table and of course he's in a plain white sheet that gets grubbier as time goes on so I guess you know that there's no washing machines in the hereafter but his little buddy in a house across the way they kind of wave and there's some tell <laughs> they send notes to each other yeah they uh, put notes up <laughs> yeah and thought little thoughts yeah. and uh and he's on like a little uh a, a floral pattern uh sheet that he's under and he's waiting for something and this this is just it is there you know because i kept kind of thinking about of course a movie that was extremely popular ghost yeah. Uh, you know, uh, years back with Patrick Swayze right, and Demi right, Moore. Right. You're gonna, it's, this is going to remind you. Yes. it's going. But with that one, it's kind of like, okay, the ghost has fulfilled either their purpose or that they've got, and you never find out, you know, uh, and, uh, not to give it away, but the use of notes with for communication yeah. is rather important in this movie. Well, too. also I think the film shows the difficulty much like a dream where you have somebody you want to embrace and you can't, you can't, they keep eluding your embrace. This one has, for me, the idea, except for one scene where he trashes the place yes. out of jealousy yes. for a guy who has kissed his former wife. Uh, well, but, Am but, I correct with that? Was no, it was uh, the, his, uh, I don't know wife, but they were significant other. Okay. But where he trashes it was with this loving Hispanic family. Okay, and that you know that he uh, breaks up everything, and they could see him because you get a shot of him holding up a glass of milk, and then a reaction shot of them looking at this glass of milk floating in air. Well, my point being that in most cases in the film, he has little, if anything, to do with the people he's watching, even his former love. Yeah. He, and this is the thing that we have always feared, and you and I have been on ghost tours where you have communed with ghosts, and we know how difficult it is. <laughs> we, we have. We've gone on ghost walks. You know, know. We've done stuff. You know, and the, the rapping. Now, this is what I kind of like because there's a bit of a mystery there, and it's like because you go back in time, and, and uh, near the end that you see, like, two ghosts sitting in the house so is this the ghost because he sees himself yeah you know in this kind of like not a flashback scene but basically and it refers back to an earlier scene in the movie when they're uh, uh wake in, up in the middle of the yes. and they hear a noise they're in bed and they hear a yeah. noise you're right and i suspect that that's a uh, some kind of a symbol of their relationship rather than another ghost yes. but it yes. is a, it is slightly confusing but i believe even though we can't tell it's still Casey's character who is called uh, C yes uh, in yeah. the credits in the end and she is uh, M I yes. think, in the credits at the end well look at Wayne Miller okay I, you know I mean this is just what I feared after you die you're just not gonna go away no I won't I mean, you know, I'm like a straight cat you, you know uh, you keep feeding me I'll come back now I want to look at my notes to make sure oh, that, God, I, no. that I uh, covered everything Wayne Miller. before I give it a grade <laughs> the, the, the film is a 
ghost story. Yes. What grade would you award it, oh, even God. from the afterlife? I have to, and I tell, you, I had to think long and hard because it, knew you at would. first I was thinking, oh, it does it even rate a D? This is why I'm I thinking, assigned it to you. I'm giving, I'm giving it a B minus okay. because there's a lot to think about in this movie. But I tell you, it's not. Don't go in <laughs> expecting, you know, uh, uh, either a comedy or a horror. Film. And I'm going to award it a B plus out of my affection for Rod Serling and Terrence Malick. Okay, well, I've got to go drift away if I can find my way out of here. <laughs>